We'll launch up some websites here. My profile, YouTube streaming Pavlovich workshop. Yeah, I'll know this one. Actually, I haven't been through here to see if there's any questions on this side. No, it seems pretty light. All right, all right, all right. Cool, all right, so let's go into recording Apenator. So I've got a bunch of Z tools we can check out. Also, another thing I have, hit the comma key. I do have a spotlight save, so I can just double click this for my reference here. Um, right now, if I go to the document background and I click and drag to a different color, you're gonna see that background doesn't quite get to the extents of this. And the reason it doesn't is because when I have this open, I like that my document kind of filled to this window because I have my brush settings over here and I'll go in here into auto masking and modifiers, stuff like that all the time. Um, and then of course my tools over here. However, sometimes it's useful to uh, maybe not have so much uh, brush stuff over, open over here. So I'll go ahead and close that off and then I'll start putting brush things that I use all the time like back face masking and topological. I'll throw this on my custom interface. And uh, you guys know all this, but if you go in here to preferences, config, enable customize, that'll put you into customize mode. And then you can throw anything else in here. I'm trying to think if I need anything else in there that I go in and do all the time. Topological, back face masking, mask by polygroups, I don't do that often. Mm -hmm -hmm. Anything in the modifiers I do all the time. Hmm. Well, if I come across anything that I do all the time, I will definitely throw it in there. So I'll go ahead and close the brush down here. And uh, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and close this divider down so I have more room to kind of, uh, there's more room for activities, I suppose. I'm going to go up here to document, and we're going to have W size turned on. That's going to auto fit my window size, so new document. No, I don't want to save any changes. And now my new document fits this entire thing. And now I got all the room in the world for activities. Now, if I go into texture here, you're going to see I don't have any textures loaded, but they are loaded with spotlight. So, um, Let's start over. Let's start from scratch. I'm going to hit Z. This goes into spotlight mode. And this is where you can kind of go through here and move your images around or click outside of these and scale them all down or drop their opacity all down. Uh, or, and or, you can go through here and you can delete them out of here. Boink. And let's talk a little bit about reference. So, Bones Clones. Not Bones Jones. Bones Clones. And also, where's my other one? Reference skull base. Let me take a look at these. So, if you go into Bones Clones, um, man, I wish I had all the money in the world because I would buy every single thing off of this website. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff in here. And you can sort by uh, non-human primate skulls and skeletons and uh, cranial and post-cranial elements and all sorts of cool stuff, zoology and human anatomy skulls and even like really like like old Roman skulls with axe holes in them and stuff like that. Um, forensics, these are cool. Uh, anyway, I think we were in like non-human primates and there you go, there's some ape skulls in here. You can go through here and you can check out and see if there's any good reference for you. Uh, I think I grabbed this. There's a couple of them in here that had a couple different shots. So these are always nice. You can go through here. That's a good one. Uh, and you can go through here and just uh, save your images out. Uh, another really good one that had some good orthographics was the skull base. Now, I didn't really find it in here because I don't know what any of these words mean. Um, it's been a long time since I took uh, a science class. So this is where I was like, well, let me do a search. And let me go to gorilla. There it is. So now a uh, gorilla male, 360 degree view. Uh, so, oh, and there you go. This has a an entire 360 degree view, which I didn't even realize it had. I would just save these images out, uh, which super high res images uh, and a lot of information and detail in here. So these are the images I saved. However, would have been totally sweet to uh, have clicked and dragged on here. But anyway, I'll go ahead and link y'all to that. There you go. Hey, good morning get started here uh, um, so yeah there's a there's a sweet 360 degree view 
and uh, there's a lot of different animals on here. So we can go to, um, hey, that's the other thing too, is maybe I, I wanna do something different just for this one. There's something, not necessarily easy, but just something I can just uh, hop into real quick. Kind of mush some stuff around. Yeah, that'll work. And then I can just save this out as my three-quarter, back three-quarter view. Well, let's do this. Um, oh, okay. We'll talk about this. Well, yeah, we'll talk about this. Okay, so just for streaming, we're going to go through here and we're going to save this image as. And we're going to throw this into another recording. New folder. And we'll throw it in here. And I'll go to top here. Nice. All right, I think I got everything off here. And then let me go ahead and see if I can't make this a little bit bigger. No, that seems to be as big as it gets. Let's go ahead to open, save image as, no, open images, new tab. Nope, that's about it. Uh, so one thing I could do is I can use green shots. So if I'm gonna use this from like my front three quarter, I can hit print screen and I can just grab this and I can go save as and we can throw that right onto my Birdinator reference. And then, so we got a front three quarter. We can do a front three quarter, this view. Can never have too much reference. Let me back three quarter. And you know, you can use snippet for this or uh, snip it or snag it, and back three quarter. And of course I can just have this window open down here underneath and we can just kind of scoot around there. All right, so we got our skull base here and now we're gonna get it into ZBrush. So we're gonna go in here to, uh, for reference. So we're gonna go in here to my textures and before we start importing a bunch, I'm just gonna import one. So we're gonna go over here to, um, recording, coordinator reference. So we're gonna grab this first one here and then we're gonna take this one and add it to spotlight. And um, there we go. So we got something in spotlight here. And now we're gonna go in here to texture, import, and we'll grab the rest of these here. Ta-da, and I'm gonna make these all the same size. We're gonna tile unified. And now we're gonna pick out which ones we want to snap to. I'm also gonna click off of all of these and just move all of their, uh, just so you can see a little bit better, uh, move them all up. Now. One thing I used to do, uh, and by used to do, and uh, it's it's very, till very recently, uh, I would go in here and I would try uh, again. You can move these opacities down, and um, you know you can try and line these things up and make them all the same size until I realized like if I'm moving the object between every single one of these, there's no reason for me to do that. So you know I can just put these wherever I want and scale them to whatever size I want, whatever makes more sense. Like if I'm not gonna if I'm not gonna grab a whole lot of detail off of here, let's go ahead and keep this thing small and I'll just stick it somewhere. If I am gonna be uh, searching for a lot of detail on a side view, I'll make it a little bigger or a three quarter view. I'll make that a little bit bigger uh, relative. Uh, you know what, I, is there a crop option in here? You can tile, extend, Ooh, can we extend? Oh my goodness, of course there is. So you can use the extend, now if we hold down Oh yeah, that's right. So you're gonna wanna move this to the middle and then we can extend, oops. Um, oh, we guess we can extend either side. So I'm gonna move this to the side here and we'll extend it. Oh no, I thought I was gonna be so smart. So we're gonna extend this back until we don't wanna clip anything. I'm gonna go over here and we'll extend this back just to kinda save a little bit of room on here. And then we got a bottom view here, and we got a side view here, and then we got a top view here. Again, make these as big or as small as you want. And these are my back and front three quarters. If I'm not gonna use these right now, I can just go ahead and delete them out here. I can always uh, bring them back in 
or I can just leave them small over there. They're not really hurting anything. Uh, but let's say this is going to be what I'm going to snap my reference to. And let's give a little bit more real estate to that three quarter view. And this three quarter view almost looks orthographic. So that'll be nice too, because I don't like sculpting in um, perspective mode all that much. So we have a reference in here. And so I don't have to do this all again. I'm going to go up here to my mm -hmm, texture spotlight, save spotlight. And we'll go ahead and throw this where we can find it. You can throw it in the folder that you're uh, recording in, or if you want quicker access to it, I mean, it doesn't take you that long to get there, but you can throw it in here to Z spotlights. And you can see we have my gorilla skull. I'll just go ahead and call this, uh, what skull is this? Golden Eagle. There we go. So now I have a spotlight. So now we're going to start. Now, when I was doing my gorilla sculpt, it was, it behooved me to hit the comma key and go in here to the tool menu and go in here to the anatomy model here, drag that out, and then we can go to subtool, isolate, uh, I mean, you can just have this one, the skeleton selected, say delete other, okay, and then hold on control shift, and I'll go over here to select lasso, and let's grab all these pieces, control shift A, delete hidden, I always like to do a unify, shoot that right down to the middle of my scene, uh, make it ZBrush friendly, and then there we go, we can start with this. Uh, not gonna be overly helpful on a bird skull. I mean, it's kind of interesting if you wanted to like morph, um, if you wanted to do like a blend shape and like morph this head into like a bird skull and see how creepy that would get. Um, but uh, yeah, again, not overly helpful. So we'll go ahead and delete that there. But if you were starting with a gorilla skull or a, a, a different type of human skull, um, maybe a Neanderthal skull or something like that. That would be a good starting point. However, we're just going to start with our trusty sphere. Go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. I need to make sure, let's go and turn our floor off. Uh, well, it's so, okay, that's another thing I need to do too. You probably have a uh, cam view, so I can turn that cam view on. <laughs> that was a test one that I did while we were demoing. Let's go ahead and switch that up. There, that's a nice one. So um, here's here I know I'm in the front view, so I can hit X symmetry, so I don't have to turn the floor on and be like Z forward, Y up. Um, so this is my um, front piece here, and I'm gonna take my blur down. Huh. Oh, duh. I'm in. I'm still in enable customize. I was like, why is that? Why is that a thing? Uh, Dynamesh this down. Let's start really, really low, and turn our floor off. And this is where I would uh, start making my skull. Um, now, I would probably start here, and you can, you know, you can mush this thing around, you can go through here and you can like clip, you know, this thing into, into shape. And you got to remember, you're just working on one view, which is going to very quickly, um, I'm just tapping Alt, uh, it's going to very quickly get, and you know what, we're just going to do the top part of the skull, and then we'll do the bottom part of the skull separate, and then control drag, and W. Uh, another thing too, while we're not in the side view, uh, well, we'll talk about when we go to the top view, uh, but now we can go to the front here and we just mask this out, invert that mask, and then we'll shove this back. And the reason why I haven't saved my views yet is because um, I need a little bit more points of reference before I start making decisions on uh, how this little guy is going to fit. So we'll go ahead and uh, do that. And there, there we go. Perfect. And you're all done. And you can go through here and you can just start poly painting your RGB on there with your standard brush. Look at that. You have a bird skull. Of course, that's just the beginning. How's everybody doing? Um, you know how to disable the red striped overlay geometry when using live booleans. Red striped overlay geometry. Oh, are you talking about when you're in here under preferences? Or not preferences. Um, would that be... God, where they put that render, render booleans. Uh, you might have show coplanar turned on. This one right here. That's going to show you where you have bad geo, which is good to know. So I would kind of leave that on, maybe. Uh, turn off polyframe. Yeah, if you have, if you are doing live booleans, and you have polyframe turned on. That'll show you the actual geometry. I don't know that it'll be red striped. Um, cool. All right, so we do do Shift Z uh, to bring this back, and now um, we could save this as a camera view, 
if we wanted to. And I think we're in pretty good shape. If you want to see this a little bit better, let's go ahead and switch this over to our maybe Skin Shader 4. And let's also go up here to Movie Timeline Show. And we'll go ahead and store this. Now, if you wanted to make it easier on your brain, you might want to go like left to right uh, with your arrow keys or something like that. You wouldn't want to put these uh, willy-nilly. Of course, you could always move them around. Uh, but again, I don't have a, quite enough points of reference. We're going to go to the top view here. And we're going to keep plugging away. So we're going to make this this size. We're just going to go through. We have X symmetry turned on. So very quickly, we can just work on one side of the mesh. And then um, this is getting a little bit difficult to see. And when you're doing really tight corners like that, there's a pretty good chance it's not going to work all that well. And I'm going to get rid of that cam view. It's cramping my style right now. So back into preferences, cam view, turn that off. I mean, once you're oriented, um, unless, well, here's the other thing too. You can use that cam view as reference. So if, you know what? Yeah, if I would have had like a bird skull 3D model, I could use that up here and just be using that for sculpting. Of course, if I had a bird skull 3D model, I wouldn't be making one. So and then we'll go back down here and we'll go ahead and clean this up real quick. Another thing, if you did have a bones clones model, Oh boy, you could just photogrammetry that thing. Uh, speaking of, uh, you can use, uh, what's the tool I've used? Um, photo scan and reality capture. And in fact, I was playing around with uh, photo scan and they changed it to uh, Agisoft Metashape. Um, and I was doing some performance testing on this. And this is a, this is using the GPU and the CPU. Um, so I was using the 3970X processor that I have. And then we have the uh, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. I was kind of messing around with some of the settings to see what the best results were. And it's the, the stuff like this is really, really uh, hardware intensive. Uh, oh, that's another thing too. I updated where it is. There it is. Uh, I did my, my specs here. So if you want to go and um, check this video out, we have a little bit more new updated stuff there at CES. They're announcing a bunch of new stuff. So I have this really old processor now. Uh, it's so, two weeks ago, uh, 3970X, much, uh, much smoother than my previous 2990WX, um, a lot faster, a lot cooler, I'll go ahead and move this stuff around. Now, okay, so this is the thing too, so when I'm moving this thing around, uh, when I'm in the side view and I want to move something around, I have X symmetry turned on, it's pretty easy just to kind of go through and move this stuff around, it's not quite getting everything in there, um, but... Uh, you can do a, you can usually do a pretty decent job of kind of moving across that plane. If you really want to move across that plane, go back into our brush settings here. I don't do this enough to really put it in my um, interface, but if I go over to, or you know what, I bet it's under transform, transform, pulsable symmetry, nope. Um, what am I looking for here? It's called. Man, I really can't think of where it is right now. It's it's a um, it might's got to be under transform, right? Why would that make sense to me? Modifiers? No. Huh? Uh, it's just something that goes like straight back, and I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> uh, let me look at my notes real quick. Unless you guys know where it is, uh, it's obviously something I don't use all that often. So, let me see. CG ZBrush. Let's see if I've got a screenshot saved. History recall, paint, deco brushes. It's something new that was in 2020. Um, transforms, analyze. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, of course, it's not on there. Uh huh. Uh huh. Infinite depth. Yeah, where's that at? <laughs> I did a demo on it weeks ago, which is like a lifetime. History recall. Okay, so let's see. Infinite, infinite depth, brush depth menu. Of course, that makes sense. It's infinite depth. And then over here you have infinite depth. And uh, thank you, um, Roger. So infinite depth, and we have it turned on in the uh, Z axis, which isn't gonna help me from the side view, but from the side, uh, from the front view, it certainly will. So if you ever, or from the top view, we can turn infinite depth on in the Y. So we can just turn that on. 
And then when I go over here and I want to move this entire cheekbone back, like I was trying to do, I can just use infinite depth to go through and do a much better job. Um, okay. So we got this going, we got this going, I'm going to ignore that jaw temporarily. In fact, we'll just model the top of the skull here. Now this is where it gets maybe a little bit tricky, not really, but this is where you may have to go in here and turn on perspective. Uh, and also maybe go into your draw menu here and go and play around with these focal lengths. So if maybe it's 30 more 35 or more uh, 50 or more 28, or just change around uh, those millimeters. Uh, in fact, you could probably uh, take a look at the data inside of the uh, image and they might have the camera that it was made and the focal length that it was shot at, but I think this is going to be close enough. So, And then here we're going to pull out, now okay, here's another thing too. I'm going to go ahead and turn off infinite depth because I just want to grab these little brows here. And there we go. Now we have our eagle skull it's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to start going through here and saving my camera views. I think I have enough information. Uh, another thing I could do, uh, let's switch over to our MacCap Gray. I'm going to hold down Shift, snap it to the front, turn off perspective, turn all this off, and I'm going to put a line. Let's turn Z add back on. I'm going to put a line and crank that Z intensity up and turn our lazy radius off. A line right down the middle. This isn't enough. Start. You know, once you get it blocked in and you're starting to sculpt and stuff, you need a little more resolution, feel free to um, raise the resolution up as needed. And in fact, when it starts getting really thin, you can go through here and you can inflate like so. So we're going to turn our reference back on. And now uh, we have that midline, so we know where the middle of our stuff should end up. And we'll go ahead and turn perspective back on. So while we're in perspective mode, we can line this view up here. And we'll go ahead and put a little dot and save it. Then we'll turn perspective off because these are fairly orthographic. I don't think having perspective on is going to help me. And then you could go and you could save a view here and then the top view. And again, I'm making these all different sizes. It doesn't really matter if the images are all lined up. This view and then of course that side view. And that side view is probably going to be the biggest help dialing in most of the stuff. And then we'll do this. And then now we don't need to see the movie anymore. So go to movie, timeline, show, off. And then now I can just use my arrow keys to cycle through these. Now, when I go back to that first one, got to make sure I turn perspective back on. You can just hit P on your keyboard. Um, and if you wanted to leave your perspective on, you'd probably have to go through here. It's, it gets a little bit tricky. You can go into uh, the draw mode, and you would need to turn off probably this universal perspective camera, and then turn on and off align to object, just because it's going to start skewing as you get further away from the middle, uh, unless you have that off. So I'll leave that up to you. But anyway, that's how you block out a skull. And of course, you would block out uh, the gorilla skull the exact same way uh, if you weren't starting from a, um, what's it called? An actual skull model, or you didn't do like, you didn't photogrammetry it or something like that. Uh, but we'll go ahead and leave um, all that back on here. And then now, uh, since this is pretty, probably pretty solid as far as blockouts go, you know. There's nothing too egregious or off about it. Um, that's that brow here. Good, good, good. And then I go back over here and then turn perspective back on. And this is where I am going to have to flare these parts out here. I'm going to flare this out. Just so I know, that's the, those are the verts I need to grab. So I'm not accidentally grabbing cheekbones or anything like that. And also looks like there's a slight discrepancy on these brows and stuff, but I think that'll work. And if I ever need to, I'll also go over here and I'll grab this opacity and I'll just drop it down. And you know what, I'm going to turn off this as well. It's going to be confusing. As I can go through here and I can kind of be like, oh, okay, I need to pull that. Tab Z. Um, I need to pull that brow up a little bit. And you can also start sculpting through here a little bit. You can turn off RGB if you don't want to start paint sculpting through. Uh, and you can go through here. And as you're sculpting, it will uh, sculpt through. So by that I mean if I go to the top here and, um, oops, turn off perspective. And uh, if I start sculpting, it's going to kind of 
sculpt these images through here. Uh, if you have RGB turned on, it'll do your poly paint, and it'll also do um, the uh, individual model. If you did want to just kind of sculpt out here, like say, we had this out of the way, or you know, let me just get rid of that. It's like, you know what, I want to use these as reference, so I'm going to go like this. Uh, but I just want to kind of sculpt over here, and you're trying to go sculpt over here, it's not going to let you. Uh, so you need to go over here into Brush, Samples, turn off Spotlight Projection. Um, if you want a color, you're going to want to leave that on because you want to project while you're using Spotlight. But if you're just out here sculpting, uh, you don't need to have that on. And then you can just go through here, and then you can use like your Trim Brush and start uh, making uh, judgments on you know how this is going to work. And so this is like that big... Uh, cavity right here, so we can go ahead and pop that in. Use your standard brush, Damien standard brush, clay brush, trim dynamic, and just very quickly just start knocking out. Um, and you can already, you don't even have to be behind there to see like, oh, I'm going to need a hole there and maybe a line across here. And then once you, once you kind of have that going, then you can uh, snap back to your camera views and start dialing in exactly what these things need to be. So anyway. You see, pretty quickly you can start getting a skull, and then once you get get to the bottom here, um, you can start painting this stuff on and putting in these these things. And this is going to get maybe a little bit tricky, uh, man. So their their little arch is way down here. That's interesting. So this is act this would actually be connected, and we can dial that in. That's going to go all the way up to the front. Wow, there's something new every day. So we can take this here. And we have uh, this line right here. Uh, we can make this an entire different piece of job. I'm going to talk about this little piece right here. If you did need to connect something like that that early, um, and you might even want to work on something like that separately for a little bit. So we can go in here and we can just grab like a cylinder, pull that out and thin it out, and rotate this back around. And we can say, let's go ahead and um, split mass points. And then this piece, uh, again, since we did split mass points, now it's on its own separate subtool. And we can just kind of mess these things around. I'm going to go through here. It's not quite, I just, this cylinder doesn't have any divisions. Um, you know what, let's just, DynaMesh is turned on for it, so let's go ahead and turn, just DynaMesh it to get more resolution on that. You could subdivide it up or something like that, but nah. So anyway, little fragile pieces like that. Uh, we could leave separately, and there's a little jawbone and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, as you're going through here, and also when you're going through and doing like this nose cavity thing, um, boy, that looks like it goes all the way through, doesn't it? Uh, it also kind of goes to the back here. So that would be something where it's like, okay, let me go ahead and hide this temporarily. So you'd start, and I'm, I'm not blocking out fully to like get to that point where I'm actually going to start doing this for real. Um, but you could go through here and start doing, uh, maybe grab a sphere here. And we were talking about live booleans earlier. So you could do a preview of this. I'm going to do a split unmasked points. It's going to shoot it below. We're going to go to subtract, turn on live booleans, and now I can start seeing a preview of what this live boolean would look like. So I can grab this one and I kind of mush it uh, back in there again. If you turn on polyframe, you can see the object. And if that's what you're talking about, uh, this, I mean, I would, I would assume that you're, um, oops, um, shoot. It would be, um, wow. <laughs> I would assume that your polygroups are always red, uh, but again, I think it would be um, underneath render to show coplanar. If you had any coplanar faces, I think that's where that would come into view. Uh, we're going to turn that off, and now we want to put a hole uh, right through here. And in fact, you know what I'm going to do? This is getting a little bit low resolution. Uh, crank that up a little bit. I don't want to crank it up too high because I don't want to have to <clears throat> excuse me fight my geometry. Uh, having to go in here to smooth stronger and stuff too early. Um, and again, that's probably a little bit too high. Uh, but I do, there is some instances where I am just going to need that geometry anyway to kind of evaluate. So we're going to go through here and we're going to take this and we're going to poke a hole right through here. If this is what I like, I can make a Boolean mesh out of it. Um, or I can go through here, I, it, since this does go all the way through the skull, looks like. We can go through here, put another um, sphere in here. And then I'm going to turn on polyframe for this one. We'll go ahead and rotate it. And if I'm going to scale it, I'm going to go into L sim so I can scale it across its uh, local axis here. Put that all the way through. 
and then uh, again turn polyframe off. And then now I can go through here. Start rushing that around. So once I have this, um, again I can just keep this as subtractive, take this one, I don't have to do like a subtool boolean or anything like that. I just merge these down and then control drag and that'll make that a boolean dynamic mesh here. And I'll go ahead and thicken this up a little bit. So at least my cuts are where they need to be and then I can just go through and change these uh, with Dynamesh. So that would be that part there. Um, yeah, so let's see, let's do Shift Z here. Um, hey, what's up Bertram? Let me get a drink of water here. Ah. And let's go ahead and like load up where we were. So we're gonna go to, uh, nope, we're recording. So I'm gonna go here to one and this, okay, perfect. So this is be this would be like the block out. And if I go in here to my comma key and we go in here to our spotlight, we can load up. Now I don't have, um, crank this down. I don't have the uh, movie timeline. You can, when I did the movie timeline, you could go in here to timeline uh, show and you could do all your, um, if you, if you want to get rid of these, you can go ahead and get rid of these here and you can save those as well. So you can save a spotlight, you can save a timeline. So for example, and go over here and we can say turn on perspective. And this is where, this would probably be my block out. And this would take you probably, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to kind of get uh, decent and then you can go through if you're not talking through it and trying to explain stuff and dilly dallying like I tend to and then we'll say go to the side view here and then bottom view so now I can cycle through these pretty easily and go into solo mode so we can just see this here and I'm trying to remember if I did I think the only thing I, I started this out with a sphere and the uh, teeth I ended up borrowing from the other skull that we were looking at earlier. Um, so yeah, and then of course when I go back here, I need to turn, make sure uh, perspective's turned on, and then I can cycle through these with perspective off, and I'm good to go. And then over here in your movie timeline, movie timeline save, you can save this as a timeline. I don't know that, it, does it have a timeline? ZBrush 2020. Z timelines, look at that. You just save it right in there. And then uh, if you if ZBrush crashes or you close out of ZBrush, you can always uh, get it back. I don't know if you go to here to File, Save As, and Save as Z Project. I think it might save your timeline with this, but I'm not certain. I don't think it'll save your spotlight. So. Oh. Uh, Avatar dropped artworks for Avatar 2, and the fourth one is amazing. Cool. Awesome. I'll have to check that out. Um, <clears throat> trying to remember... What Avatar was all about. <laughs> it's been a while, Senior Cameron. Uh, okay, so we got here. I'm going to do Shift Z, turn that off, and then uh, as we go through here, um, we can kind of step through. So here it is, a little bit more refined. Uh, and this would just basically just be a refined block out. Um, nothing too special going on here. This is where I kind of borrowed those teeth. These are the teeth block out, but of course I just dynamesh them almost right off the bat. Uh, so again, very quickly, this whole skull probably took me maybe three hours total to kind of get to the end. Apinator 03, a little bit more refined. And it's not completely done. It's not like to the nines, like completely uh, detailed or out or anything like that. And this will be the same. Yeah, go ahead and turn that off. And the, it, by, when you get to this point, you can start painting on that detail. So if you go over here and it's like, okay, there's a lot of... Um, interesting little bumps along the top that I want to get or in the three-quarter view um, there's some good stuff in there I want to kind of start sculpting on now if you wanted to paint this as like oh I actually want to paint a texture on here from uh, reference shots or anything like that you're probably gonna want them from the same uh, family of photographs like these are two completely different skulls number one and number two this is, has a different treatment uh, than these ones these ones look a little bit more real so you would want to um, use that, and if you are taking the photographs yourself, um, try to have nice diffuse lighting so you don't have a whole bunch of baked-in shadows that you have to compensate for. You can you can use D-lighting in some um, some programs. Um, Unity has one, and then Substance Alchemist has one. Houdini has one, I think, and uh, you can use those. Uh, but anyway, so I can go in here to 
RGB here and you can like just start painting on here and in fact we can just go ahead and paint this whole side here and you can kind of use this to determine uh, where some of that detail needs to go oh <laughs> right uh, underneath brush turn on spotlight projection <sighs> okay so now we have spotlight projection turned on now we can go through here I was like, what, is my brain broken? There we go. Now, I'm going to be sculpting detail on here. It's like you can see, you know what, this detail, it, it, this mesh isn't really all that high res. Oh, and this is actually Z mesh too. So um, going through here, and once you have your block out done, you can start, uh, if you're not making any major changes, like you're not going through here and doing any things crazy is going to make your geometry go nuts, you're just doing details. Uh, that's when I went through and just did a quick zero mesh and then uh, subdivide project, subdivide project, subdivide project, subdivide project. Um, interestingly enough, if you did, uh, right now you can do, uh, I think we talked about this in Zebras 2020, if you go to my uh, YouTube channel here, Zebras 2020 new features and do new features part two. Uh, but in here, I'd actually I think in part two is when I talked about it, uh, you can use, you can Z project. Let me just start with, um, let's do it on this one. So let's say, you know what, this bird skull, uh, I'm not gonna make any major changes to it. Um, and if you wanna clean up some of these scragglies, let's turn on um, Sculptures Pro. Let me go ahead and get rid of some of those. Let me read Dynamesh. Uh, okay, so it's like, we like this bird skull. Now, instead of duplicating this off and zero meshing and projecting, what I can do is I can just use my history here. And also, let's go to movie timeline and turn that off. So what I can do, and I'll turn that off. I can go into zero remesh, which is going to be under your geometry. Uh, we'll say depth size down a bit. Target polygon count is fine. And we have X symmetry turned on. Go ahead and zero remesh this. And um, hooray. And once we have that, um, if you want to, uh, you can go down here and you can do subtool project. And instead of doing project all, because we're not projecting to anything, there's nothing else in the scene to project to except my history. Um, so you see project all is uh, grayed out and so is project history. However, if we go back one, you're gonna see there's my original high res. It's not that high res, but it's more high res than this thing. I can hold down control and tap. And now I have project history. I can do geometry and color or both or uh, you have to do one, good. Um, so you can do geometry and or color. And so we have geometry selected, we can go back up here and then I can just do project history and that'll project my uh, verse back. So if I go through here and I do zero mesh or half, perfect, that looks good. Project history, get my verts. And now I can do uh, control D to subdivide, project history, control D, project history, control D, project history. And then I've got my details back. And now I have subdivision history here and I didn't have to duplicate this off or anything like that. Uh, and so now when you're sculpting on a mesh like this, it's much nicer. Uh, you don't have any triangles. Let's go ahead and turn Z-head back on. Uh, and if you're painting, you don't have to use, I, I tend to go into standard brush and just go between these two here. Um, but if you wanted to, you could just have a hockey assigned to BPA paint. Um, but anyway, uh, when you're going through here, you can do some very nice uh, details and you can subdivide this thing up. And the other cool thing too is now you, you can um, UV it. So if you are painting that detail onto your skull and you do have UVs, which I'm not sure if we do, UV map. Yeah, I do have UVs. If I didn't, if I delete those UVs off, um, super easy. Just very quickly, we'll go in here to Z plugin and we'll go over here to UV master and we're gonna say work on clone. This is um, symmetrical. Oh, you know what? It may have a little bit of problems. Well, let's see how it does. Um, let's unwrap. And then flatten. Eh, it worked fine. Um, if you wanted to, you could go through and you could do uh, enable control painting. You can check your seams here. Oops. Uh, if you didn't want a line going through here, you could say enable control painting protect. It's like, I want to protect all this and I want to attract everything, I don't know, on the underneath side here. Um, and then when you go through here and say unwrap it, that may or may not work that well. Um, ah, it worked great. So we go in here to flatten, and there you go. Um, in fact, uh, but here's where you have uh, polygroups turned on. So if you did have polygroups, you can go through here and you can be like, you know what? I want all of these to be in one island. So you can hit Control W. And if this needs a little bit of cleanup, you can go check seams. Really? Uh, go through here and make this all one polygon. Or you might, it might be easier. Hold on, Control Shift, select Lasso, and you can grab this entire section here. So this one and this one. 
Control W, and then you can go through here. Let's do um, a Z Modeler Polygroup. Hold down Alt, start painting, tap Shift, and that'll inherit that one. And then this one here, let's just do an Auto Groups. And then we'll grab both of these, Control W. So now you have a polygroup here, that's going to keep it into its own island. Uh, so now we can use polygroup, symmetry, control painting all at the same time. And then when you unwrap it, uh, actually I think I turned my, let's see. Yeah, that worked fine. And then, uh, then when I uh, flatten this, you can see there's my polygroup. So you can go through and you can do uh, your own polygroup. So once you're cool with this, we're going to go over here to copy UVs. And we'll go ahead and paste them onto this bad boy. And now that we have textures on there, we can go down here and we can go over here to our texture map, create new from poly paint. There we go. And now we're transfer that vert information to a texture. In this case, you need to clone the texture out first and then under your texture tab, probably this one here is easier. You can select this one, then you can just go and export it as a PSD or JPEG PNG bitmap TIFF. Cool beans. Hey, Goran. Um, so yeah, so that's how you make a skull. Or one of several ways to make a skull. But that's how I did this one. And again, didn't take too long. And, um, and all this stuff in here, a lot of this was semi-guesswork because I didn't realize that on this skull base website, and again, I love this thing, here, uh, this is a turntable. So here's your thumbnails and you can go through and you can save these out if you guys missed that. Uh, and then here is the uh, turntable you can use. So this would have been really super duper handy when I was like trying to figure out like, does this go in or does this go out? Because it can be a little bit difficult to tell from this view, like depth, like, wait, okay, that looks cut in and then this looks cut out and this looks like it's deeper, but it's kind of difficult to tell. And then you go to this view and you're like, oh yeah, there it is. This is out, and this is in, and this is out, and this is in. Um, all that good stuff. In fact, you might be able to, if you went through and did a, an, uh, exported an image for every single one of these, you could probably throw that into, oh, I wonder if I had the patience to do that. Uh, go in here to like photo scan or reality capture and just get a photogrammetry model uh, that you could, for instance, if you go in here to documents here, import. Sorry. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No. Damn. Uh, I was hoping I was going to have something in there. Um, in fact, well, maybe we just run something in the background here. Let's do this. Let's go to workflow, add photos. Um, let's just do, we'll do the JPEGs. I mean, you can do DNGs. I think JPEGs will work fine. And then here we'll say align photos, actually high, sure. Uh, yeah, it looks fine. And now this is um, this is one of those things too that uh, tends to be processor intensive. So it's good that I have a lot of processor in here. Um, and here it also uses quite a bit of the, let's see what exactly it's using here. It uses quite a bit of the GPU as well. And while it's working, we can we can keep working because we got plenty of horsepower. So we'll go back over here to my startup material. And yeah, so that's how you make a skull. Now, when you have your gorilla skull here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through here and I'm going to do a quick delete. I'll just kind of clear all this stuff. I don't need it sitting there in memory. And if I did want to do like a Terminator bird skull, I could keep, I mean, this is kind of grody, but that's all right. I'll go ahead and save it just in case, just in case I want to go back. the Z tool. Delete all and delete all. Uh, you could also go in here to preferences, initialize ZBrush if that's your jam. And then we're going to go in here to recording, Evenator, and then this is where we started going from uh, the Gorilla Skull to making this a little bit more uh, hardy, hardy surface. Let me move this down real quick. So how would I go about doing that? Well, number one, I'm probably going to make changes large enough to warrant me getting rid of my subdivision history. So this would be nice if I'm just going to take this all the way through. And I do like, I wouldn't, 
make a skull and then make it mechanical and then be like, oh, that's the only version I have. I would always have a version that was the original skull because these are so nice to have around uh, for all sorts of projects. You can use this as part of like a creature um, pack. Ooh, that reminds me. I need to start uh, putting this stuff into creature stuff. But yeah, you can put this into like a creature kit bash library and you can kind of start from this and do some really cool uh, studies with this or make some cool stuff with this. But anyway. Uh, go through here, and this is where I would go back down to like, hey, you know what, I'm just going to dynamesh this uh, at a fairly low resolution. And uh, it said, do you want to freeze your transformations? No, when I'm dynameshing, rarely do I ever want to freeze my transformations. So we'll keep dropping this down. And this is where it was having maybe an interesting time. I wanted to say, what was it doing? How did I fix this? because it was doing this exact same thing and it was in like a weird state. Delete hidden. Nope. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a quick merge visible. It's good. It gets, tends to get rid of any gremlins. Uh, another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and unify this. Now I'll shoot it right down here. And then uh, you can split two parts or split the similar parts. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to make it easy on myself. I'm going to grab a little piece of this one here and then split hidden and then grab a little piece of this one here and say split hidden. And then on this one, uh, if we dynamesh this, there we go, I kicked it back in. Uh, so this one, I'm gonna take that resolution maybe to like 176, blur is off. And uh, this is where I would kind of start uh, going through and determining you know, what I want my reference to look like. Speaking of reference, I probably would have had skull reference all around my interface here. Ooh, that's loud. Um, but, for example, let's go into recording. I've got a gorilla reference here, so I can go ahead through and I can just grab all these. Uh, and I'm using Quadro. Let me show you where that is. Hold on. Where'd my stuff go? There it is. Uh, I want to say the newest version, uh, it's free, but I think the newest version is on Gumro. This is the 11. It says 0.95, but I think it's actually 11. I think the version you want is 11.0. Uh, so this will be, that'll be the latest one. And so I like to use this. Uh, I guess you can't really see this kind of shot it up here, but here's all my reference images. Um, and now instead of having a board that I have to like zoom in and zoom out of and zoom around, I can just move it around my monitor. So I have a giant monitor and then I'm just recording the middle of it. And I can just move this around my monitor and I can have like restream open on the left so I can see that and then I can have my reference over here and then you can like zoom in your reference, uh, middle mouse pan. And then you can also save different versions of this. So if you wanted to do one version that was like, okay, here's all my skull pieces. I'm like, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna say save as and that's gonna save this as a, a template file. So whenever I load it up, it'll load it up just like this. And then I can go through and I can zoom in on all my images and I can call it teeth. So I can say this one is teeth and I can just go through here and there's a little, you can go in here and say open recent and it'll open up the gorilla skull and then it'll open up teeth and then it'll open up uh, nostril or eyes or ridge, skull ridge, anything like that. So you can save variants off based on, you know, where all it, so that way you're not having to be like, well, I want to look at this skull ridge. Now I'm going to zoom over on my reference and look at another skull ridge up close. It's like, it's all in your interface. It's all nicely around your interface. Um, and you can put it wherever you want. You're not limited to um, kind of having to zoom around and zoom in on a single thing. So that's why I like Quadro Reference Viewer. And the other reason, okay, so this came in handy when I was doing my, uh, this video here. Uh, when I was doing this video here and I was going through and I was kind of drawing, let me see if there's a better example. I mean, I was doing it there too, but that's not a great example. Um, I was talking about the M.2 speed. Speaking of, I gotta say, I'm, I'm fairly, I'm pretty pumped, almost more than anything, is um, so these C drive, uh, C, my, this, my only M.2 NVMe drive, the PCIe 4.0 drive that I have is my C drive. Um, so when I'm doing speed tests on like photogrammetry and stuff, I'll try to have everything on my C drive. Uh, my other two drives here are um, my SSD drives and those, aren't quite as fast, so, um, but you can get some really, there's some really interesting stuff, so that would be basically this thing right here, 
uh, Corsair uh, Force Series MP600. So these things plug right into your motherboard, which is nice, and that's the PCIe Gen 4, and it's, this is where I start drawing on it? Uh, I forget. Uh, anyway, yeah, those go right into your motherboard, so you can go here, here, and then you can have a little DIMM module. You can do three or four, and there's one on the back as well. Um, anyway, fast hard drives. Uh, but where this came in handy is I can also tap T, hold down T, and just drag left and right, and that'll actually um, fade this out. So if I'm ever in Photoshop, you know, I'll probably I'll do a proper tutorial on this, but um, just to kind of show you how I might use this for reference. I would basically, let's say I wanted to, let's say Control N, make a new uh, canvas here, and then we're going to grab my quadro image. Uh, and I don't have to move that up top, I can just go down here. Uh, you guys can't see this, but I'll, I'll do a screenshot. So when I go in here, down here and hit, hit the little quadro button, I have a bunch of options in here, and underneath settings, sorry this is dumb. Um, as far as trying to get your images <laughs> so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, settings you can see you can lock images and um, always on top. And you can also toggle grayscale in here so you can if you didn't want to see the color versions you just want to do a value studies you can turn grayscale on and off. But now I can go through here and I can make this more or less opaque. So I can go through here and I can say you know what let's go to lock images and let's go to always on top. And so now uh, and of course I could I move these out of the way the ones I don't need. But now when I'm drawing in here, um, I can very quickly, you know, I know exactly where I need to draw. And let's do show six, six. Sorry. Brush. There we go. Um, so now I know kind of where I need to draw. So if I was doing a diagram of this thing and uh, I just wanted to record this diagram on top of nothing. I would basically have this, and then I would open up OBS, and I would capture just this area of my screen that I'm drawing on. So, and then in the video, I would have the diagram as a separate uh, object in here. So I wouldn't have the object kind of sitting in here. I would just have my brush strokes being recorded, and then I could be able to go through here and very quickly uh, be like, watch me put a scratchy around here, or maybe put a little circle around here and point to it uh, and I can make little marker sound effects squeaky 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 and then uh, it would look like I was drawing right on this thing and that could control the elements separately um, and of course you can use this use this for reference drawing if you're like you know what I make a gorilla skull and go through here and just kind of do what you need to do and when you're done uh, because you can set it to OBS to just record uh, it doesn't record your entire screen you can set it to just record uh, this little section right here, this is completely invisible to the recorder. So you never see the skull that I'm using as reference. Um, so that's kind of nice. And then once you're done with that, you can go over here and you can say unlock images or we can just quit out of Quadro. Um, so that's another use of Quadro that I really like a lot. Um, and of course you could use that as a spotlight type of thing too. You can say lock images, uh, drop your transparency down, and you can just have it sitting in here. Another thing I forgot to talk about is you can go to see through and um, you can go over here and you can see through your object. I forgot I had uh, this open. Ooh, what a mess. So we can go through here and uh, let's do, uh, where is that at? Resize region. Yoink, yoink. Man, they got that moto camera control. <laughs> Um, nothing against it. I'm, it's, a, it's amazing uh, when you're used to it, <laughs> but it's been a while since I've been in there, and uh, it takes it takes a minute for me to get back into that mindset. So we'll go through here, and we'll um, let's just go to the top. That might make it a little bit easier. And narrow down our. So anyway, there's our photos. If you want more information on this uh, type of thing, you can go in here to my playlists here. And there is a complete playlist on photogrammetry. So we do reality capture and photo scan and talk about all that cool stuff. Um, and I haven't really done this in a while. Uh, I, had a, I had a test set up that I was like, I was going to do some performance tests. Um, and this is, again, one of those processor GPU hungry things and RAM hungry things. Uh, so he's got a workflow. Um, build our dense point cloud and then that'll allow us to um, go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna grab the the points in the middle there 
Okay, so anyway, we were talking about going through here. Let's turn on X symmetry, and now it's just now. Now's the fun, easy part. This is where you go through your trim dynamic and your H polish and your standard brush and your Damien standard brush, and you start making decisions on like where I want to. Oh, here, turn on back face masking so I don't make this too thin, and then we can control drag, and you just go through here and you start uh, making this work for you. So we're going to go down here. We're going to go to my H polish brush. We just have these loaded out. Um, as part of our uh, hotkey set. So Alt H is H polish, smooth stronger, uh, needs to be on. And go through here and just simplify some of this geometry. Uh, and in here, uh, probably, I'm, I mean, it'd be kind of cool to have mechanical stuff going on in here. That's not a big deal, but I, most of the reference I was looking at, speaking of, let's load some of that up. And this one I have, I'm just going to go to open, and I have. Um, I already have that all set up around my screen like it should be. Oops. And every once in a while. Uh, it'll get in kind of a weird state. And I wonder if it's from the drives itself or it doesn't want to open. Come on. Yeah, 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 I know. Open. There we go. Uh, so of course you can't see this, but all around my monitor, I have a bunch of reference um, that I can go through and I kind of zoom in and see what I want to do. Uh, but like for instance, this Dark Fate one is kind of plugged. Um, these ones, eh, let's go in pretty deep, I suppose. You can kind of see where these things kind of go in and out and stuff like that. You can kind of go, and this is another thing too, where it's like, I just want to do eye reference. I'm going to go through and zoom in and on my eyes, save that as an eye. Um, I want to call it template. I think it's a preset. Save as, file open. I don't know what they're called. Uh, but anyway, uh, just really, really easy to switch between all of your different views and kind of check out uh, what you want to sculpt. So anyway, going through here and uh, and I'm going to raise the resolution just a little bit. It doesn't have to be crazy. Maybe 264. Um, but just going through here. And then in this case, I might go through here and just inflate these back up. Or I'd put a little cylinder in there. Just because I'm probably going to end up plugging those things up anyway. And then also on the back here, um, this would be easy enough. I mean, I guess you could do this as well. You can go in here and you could hold down Control. And you could mask this part out here. Control tap. Control drag, there you go. Ta da. And again, any brush where you're going to be like sculpting through and be like, oh, I'm doing such a good job. And then it's like, oh, I'm an idiot. Uh, this is where you're going to want to go in here to back face masking. Um, you can have it toggled on all the time. Uh, you would have to save over your ZBrush brushes. Um, it, it gets a little bit scary for me. So if I go in here, this again with my clay brush where I had back face masking turn on, you can go to brush, save as, and then you would save over. 2020Z brush presets, nope. Um, I wouldn't even be in here, would it? It would be Z data. Brush presets under ZBrush 2020C program files, pixel ZBrush 2020 Z data brush presets. Uh, in here, clay. Clay. These are the ones that load up with ZBrush by default. So if you there's some in here you never use. What I would suggest doing is duplicating this entire brush presets folder off and as, a, as a copy, just so you always have to go back to. Um, you can go through here and you can delete anything you never use, so you can kind of clean that menu out. And also, if you went and saved over this clay brush, um, that should save your clay settings. So, something to think about. Uh, if you go into the About page on Quadra, you can see these are the controls here. So again, you can make them grayscale images. You can flip them horizontally or vertically. That's also useful too if you need to see like a right and left view. Uh, you can also drag out, like Control drag out, a uh, copy of any of these, and you can, you know, flip this one vertically or horizontally, or we can um, delete it. Um, anyway, going back to ZBrush here. Oh, you know what? Our point cloud's probably done. Uh, oh, I guess we already had that done, didn't we? Uh, okay, so now over here, we have the point cloud. We can do it. Here's our dense point cloud that we built. Um, looking pretty good. And then over in our workflow here, uh, we can build our mesh. 
uh, depth maps. We'll go ahead and use quality high advanced, calculate vertex colors. I don't think reuse is going to do us much good. I always like to see how we're doing here. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. 3D here. Okay, yeah. So we'll let it do its thing for a couple minutes. And then we'll go over here and we'll go and start uh, doing this. So now, uh, if I want to control the narrative a little bit, or maybe we might make some shapes like this, this is where I would go in with my Damien Standard Brush, hold down Alt, and then we can just go through and you can kind of like sweep through here and then let go of Alt and uh, just kind of go through and start making these shapes. And then to build up to those ridges, we can go in with our clay brush and kind of start building up to those ridges here. And then you can go in with your H Polish brush and you can kind of, you know, let go of Alt, tap Alt. And you can see my H Polish brush when I'm using that, it's way bigger uh, than the underlying area that I'm, that I'm kind of messing with here. And that's because it just gives me a smoother uh, result. And then I let go of Alt and tap Alt. And I can very quickly start dialing in uh, which way I want these things to flow. So I'm not going to be modeling this because I'm having fun and um, like I'm trying to just kind of determine, you know, and I wouldn't even start doing this type of stuff either. That, that, that I would save. Um, the little insignificant little cut lines that are just going to be informed by the overall shapes and volumes. I would wait on those. So just get your volumes in first. Make sure those are working for you. And then you can use your um, little cut seams and stuff like this uh, to go in and uh, reinforce uh, what you're already making. However, before you get there, uh, make sure you go through and uh, again use H polish and let go, hold down Alt, let go of Alt if you want to build up a ridge. Uh, Damien Standard or Standard Brush is fine. I tend to use Damien Standard, but it kind of depends on the situation. And then go back in with your H polish and your trim dynamic. Uh, and then once you've done that, you'll start getting, and this is actually good to kind of do, just to do like, um, planes of the face or planes of the skull studies. So if you had a skull or a, a scanned in skull, go through and you could simplify it down to just the planes that make sense. Um, that's always a good, that's a fun exercise. And go through here and kind of simplify this. So trim dynamic isn't going to respect edges. That's going to be under your brush here. Let's go ahead and hit R to clear that out a little bit. Um, yeah, under sample. So preserve edge on trim dynamic is one and then preserve edge on H polish is like 30. So that's, that's why H polish will allow me to go through and kind of polish to an edge. And then trim dynamic is going to allow me to go right across that edge and just destroy it or bevel it, I should say. And then when you're doing the teeth stuff, um, you know, if you had your teeth in here, I guess we do, you can go through here and you can kind of start um, trimming this back. Uh, you can go in here to transparency ghost, as you can see through it. Now you can kind of determine where you want your little cuts to be like so. And if you wanted to emphasize those, again, go into your Damien Standard and then go back in with your clay brush and then your H polish. You can even go in here with your clay brush here and knock this down. Instead of Damien Standard, you can kind of use your clay brush for kind of that same purpose and then go in here with your H polish. Um, there's other polish brushes you can use if you hit the comma key. Go into brush here and there is some, hmm, Element O polish. So there's some polish brushes in here. There's also some finishing brushes that might be interesting. Your clay finishers uh, might be kind of cool, um, but I generally keep it pretty simple. And then just go through here. And honestly, this is the fun part. Like this is probably my favorite part of doing anything is just going through here and having fun, uh, just kind of determining, you know, where I want these things to go. And if I want to do something like, uh, you know, you can go through here and you can change uh, whatever you want. You want to kind of back box this out. And if you want to do corners, that's when I go into my move accu brush. Anybody who's watching this channel at any length of time already knows where this is. Uh, underneath curve, accu curve for your move brush, you can go through and you can actually pull out uh, to corners here. So that's something that you like. I want this to go like straight down and be more boxy. I can use move accu to pull out to corners. And then this one, I maybe want to swoop out like a keyhole, or maybe I want to pull this down to a kind of a boxy corner. I could do that. Um, and you know, if I need a little more resolution, I can squeeze a <clears throat> little more resolution out of here. I'll go through here and hold that alt. And we'll kind of sweep this around and then clay brush or H polish and stuff like that. Oops. No problemo. And let's see if we have, that's still going. Um, 
That's like a couple minutes left. And I, oops, I hit my window here. How's everybody doing? Um, is doing Dynamesh over and over again influencing only the part of the modified service or the complete model always? Uh, it doesn't, uh, for example, if I go through here and I move this out and I read Dynamesh, uh, you're gonna see little tiny updates over here. So it does your entire model, um, but it doesn't really add to the time. You just go through here and uh, yeah, you'll see like little bitty updates in here. Um, but if you did, did just wanna do like local Dynameshing, uh, and you could really control this if you go in here to your Sculptures Pro, and it's like, you know what, I want to Dynamesh this, this area. You can go through here and uh, you can make it smaller and you could locally subdivide it um, just using this brush. And then now when you go in here and you start sculpting, let's turn this off. Actually, you can start sculpting with that on. Um, I just use a smooth brush to um, to locally subdivide. So now I'm getting a lot of resolution here and then not great resolution here. So, but if I had Sculptures Pro turned on, uh, it would be great resolution and great resolution because I'm using my brush to control where my geometry is subdivided. Of course, as soon as you control drag, um, you're back to that. You're back to your Dynamesh resolution. So, something to consider. Go ahead and knock those out. That was kind of cool though. Um, okay, so anyway, I'll go through here and our Damien standard brush here. And we kind of go through here and we'll swoop this out. And uh, the eyes too um, is one of those things where I can kind of build in a ridge and then I can kind of determine, you know what, it's a little too friendly. So I'm going to go through here. My move brush, I can do the general uh, movements here. And then I can go into move accu and I can kind of box out these corners a little bit. Like so. If that's the look you're going for. Or you might change your mind and be like, you know what, I don't mind I kind of looking at reference here. So it looks like on here, uh, yeah, that's about right. The the, the Terminator, it was, it was a lot more swoopy uh, than, than I thought it was going to be. I don't, I mean, I, I was basically raised by Terminator 2 as a child. Um, but uh, you don't, I guess you don't see him a whole lot. And at least not without uh, Arnold's flesh all on him. And um, yeah, I was expecting a little bit more just like general hard surface, but really it's super organic. So a lot of it, I mean, a lot of it's just like a really nice organic sculpt. And then at the very end, go through and cut some panel lines, pop some shapes off that are a little bit hard surface. And um, that's essentially what it is. Which is cool. There's nothing wrong with that. I was just a little bit surprised. So yeah, going through here and determining, and also if you wanted to make any major changes too, like if you wanted to like, um, you know, cut through here and have this part swoop back underneath, you can do that and use your move brush to kind of go through here. And then if you wanted to build in, and again, I'm just kind of riffing here, but you can kind of build in this. Now the other cool thing too is if you you can save off as you're doing this, you can make layers and you can kind of save off. Um, versions of your, that you're going through. You can also use your history recall brush. You can go through here, you back through your history and be like, you know what? I kind of explored with that brow, but I want to go back to my original. You just control tap that point and then um, B H R for your history recall brush hit um, X to go out of X symmetry. And then you can just use your, um, oops. Use your history recall brush to kind of pull back um, your original brow. And then you can go through here and you can do it just a quick mirror, mirror and weld, turn on X symmetry, and then you're kind of back where you started. Pull this out, pull this out, pull this out through here. And this is actually probably maybe, maybe a little bit higher res than I would normally do, um, but you gotta kind of feel that out. All right, let me get caught back up. Um, whoops, we got the skull reference. It would be, let me go back here. Skull base. Great reference, and then bones clones. Um, something went wrong with Twitter. Refresh. Yeah, I guess we can look at this together. All right. 
cool. Yeah, I vaguely remember Avatar. Um, Jake and uh, Sully. No, wait, I'm thinking of Monsters, Inc. Or maybe that was his name. <laughs> uh, I'm too drunk and he talks too fast. I can't remember what he's saying right now. I mean, uh, actually, I'd probably perform a little bit better if I was drunk. That might slow me down. Uh, but boy, drinking at 6 a.m., that would be a... That would be a a lifestyle choice I'd have to make that I don't know if I'm ready to make that lifestyle choice just yet. Um, anyway, and then go back in here with your move accu and kind of pull these things around to be, you know, what you need them to be in order to uh, make your skull cool. And so let me go through here. Let me load these up here and see if they have anything that was like, and kind of go through this process here. Five, oops. Let's open that up. Five, six. There we go. So this uh, here uh, was just me again, exact same thing. Uh, standard brush, clay brush, move brush, move accu, and then going through here and trying to determine exactly where I want these cuts to be. Oh yeah, and then also on these things here, uh, while I'm this low, I would maybe hesitate to go through and start, you know, masking uh, these things out and pulling in these types of, uh, I guess, light weighting shapes here, but. You can certainly do this. So there's a couple different ways you could do this. You can go through here. Well, first of all, let's do this. So then control, and I'm going to, you can mask curve if you want to. You can go through here and you can kind of mask curve uh, these shapes out. You can go through and you can like mask here and then go back in maybe with your mask lasso and kind of pull a little mask through here. And if you invert that mask and hold down control, um, this is where if you hold down Control and Alt, you can kind of oops, go back to Mask Pen. Uh, control Alt, you can kind of put a line through here. Um, if you hold down Control and you go over here to Stroke and turn on Lazy Mouse and do Backtrack Line, you can kind of go back and forth across a line. So Control Alt, actually, you can't with that. Well, that's okay. Because what we're going to do is we're going to go into Transpose Mode, draw the line straight where I want it, hold down Control, um, tap that line, and now you can just hold down Control Alt and Shift Stroke or control shift, I should say, uh, lazy mouse, control, backtrack, turn off lazy mouse. Well, actually, control alt, I think, messes it up. So I'm going to invert this, and now hold down control and then shift. Oh, control shift does select lasso. How do I, okay, you know what I'm going to do? That's what I did. Okay, now I remember. Uh, so I'm going to hold down Control, I'm going to make this a little bit blurry, and then hold down Control alt that'll give me a nice clean line through here. Um, you could do a poly group, and then you can actually split this out. So if you wanted to, you can hit uh, Control w or you can go down here to Geometry, uh, Edge Loop Mask Border, and then you can isolate this one. You can hold down Control shift and go in here to Slice Curve, hit your space bar to go to Brush Radius. Then you can just use this to kind of slice through uh, different uh, sections here. So you got this one, this one, and this one. Um, you could also go through and paint it. And I think that's what I ended up doing, if I remember correctly. So you can also do something like this. Um, you know what? We could just do this. Let's slice through here. And nope. Yeah, let's do that. This will be easier. So we'll use a little bit of both techniques here. So if I wanted to have access to these uh, poly groups, uh, let's isolate these ones here. A lot of different ways you could skin a cat in here. So this one. This one, this one, invert that. In fact, I need to probably record this. Auto groups and then mirror and weld. So I have this one here, here, and here. And uh, so these would be the ones uh, that I want to kind of play around with. And you can see that the lines themselves, when I did that um, uh, edge loop mask border, it did an okay job. Uh, but I can also uh, maybe make this a little bit better. So I'm going to go in here. I am going to lose some of the tightness on the corners, but that's, I, you know, I'm willing to do that. Uh, so one thing I can do to kind of straighten these things out, I can do it in post, um, but I can also do it right now if I go into my deformation menu, tool deformation, and I'm going to do a, well, first got a mask. We're going to go into masking. I'm going to mask my polygroup border, groups border, and then we're going to grow it, invert it, and then I'm going to go through here. It's going to grab these ones up here too. That's okay. 
uh, you can make that all in polygroup if you want, but I don't care about that right now. So polish by features, open circle. I'm just going to tap those, and now I get a much smoother line around here. So now what I can do is I can hit, let's turn off the line. I can hit W, and then uh, control tap any polygroup, and that'll unmask it. And I can also go through here and put that transpose line right towards this side here, and I can hit E, uh, which goes to scale, and hold down control, and I can pull in a an edge loop. And then I can hit R, to, well, I can also I can just do that for all of these. So I'll go through here and I'll just kind of tap and then E and then hold down Control and then and again anywhere I tap is going to set that and then E kind of push that in and then what I can do is I can go back hit Y to go back into Gizmo mode and then Control tap any of these and then again just set that pivot you can hold down Alt with these set that pivot right here and then you can kind of pull these in. Um, Let's do this. Mirror, mirror and weld. There we go. Control tap, alt tap, and then kind of pull this in. Oh, that's just from the other side. Oh, do I not have X symmetry turned on? Oh, amateur hour, sorry. X symmetry, turn it on. Um, there we go. Pull this in, kind of scoot this around a little bit. And that's just going to give me a little bit of a cleaner sweep around this as opposed to having that jaggy kind of line here. And then same thing for this one. Kind of go through here and um, yoink. And then yoink. And now this one, I'm going to rotate this around just a bit so I don't get that corner poking out. And the reason I had to do it on three axes as opposed to just making these all one polygroup and moving them in, um, it would have done some really weird things. Like this one has to go this way, and then this one has to go this way. So those are two different rotational axes, and then the middle one's kind of a split between them. Uh, but anyway, we can go through here, and we could just dynamesh this at whatever resolution I was working at. Uh, and again, this would, this would be something I would save until I was in a higher resolution, um, just so I can... Let's turn down shift intensity a little bit. There we go. So now we have those. Now, again, it's a lot to talk about and kind of discuss and finagle and kind of exploring and playing a little bit, uh, but it doesn't really take that long if you're just doing it. Um, John, you had a question about the AMD Ryzen video you made. Um, was that all After Effects? That was actually that was actually 100% Vegas Pro, surprisingly. Um, that was a lot of fun to make, too. Uh, well, I, I should say Vegas Pro and Boris Effects. Boris effects did the heavy lifting on the graphics. Um, and then the sound effects, oh, that was another cool thing. Um, so when I was doing even the Apinator video here, let me go to Twitter. Log in. Um, um, if you go to my profile. So this one here, if I turn on the sound, you probably can't hear that. Um, but a lot of the sound effects and little squeaks and bumps and bangs is from uh, Boom. Uh, the sci-fi, the blah, and all that good stuff is from Boom. Whoops. Is from this right here. And then also another really cool program I love is... Um, Resonic Pro. So here, uh, you know what? I don't think I have. Hold on. Hmm. I won't be able. To, I don't think you'll be able to hear what I'm hearing. Uh, but basically, you can go through here. Yeah, you can't hear that. Uh, and boy, I can barely hear myself. Anyways, let's see if we go here. Or that down. Uh, this is a really cool program, so you can go through here and you can make loops, and you can kind of go through and chop things up, and you can go through. If I want to look at this whole library, I can Alt Tap Auto Library, and I've got a bunch of sound effects here, distorted and breaking glass and all that good stuff. There's a big boom, the boom. Um, but while I'm going through here, so here's metal, massive gas bottle hits, very very Terminator sound effect. If I want to grab just this one, I can hold down Shift and just pull across here. Then I have this little button. I can just click and drag that into any program I'm working on or just onto my desktop. And then I have um, this. And I can just drag files in here. It's very lightweight, very cool. Um, and just a good way. And it's got a bunch of metadata. You can do search and stuff like that. Um, 
There's some really cool stuff in here. Machine servo. Anyway. I don't know how cool that is. But yeah, that was all Sony Vegas Pro. <laughs> I was uh, I'm in the infancy of video editing stuff, so a lot of it was kinda like, oh here's a cool FX thing I can just drag and drop and play around with. And a lot of that stuff's really um what's the word I'm looking for? Uh janky. But it was fun anyways, just kinda learning that stuff. It's actually really easy to do. Uh, what's the difference between save as project and save as tool? So save as project, you go to file, save as. It's going to save uh, your document settings, your material settings, your lights. Um, and also, if you have a bunch of stuff in here, like this skull, this skull, this skull, and this skull, it's going to save all of this. And it's going to have a huge file size because it's saving a lot of stuff. What I tend to do is just, if I'm working on this one, I don't really care about these things. These are just things I loaded in or kind of worked on and cloned off and don't really need them anymore. I'll just go to Tools, Save As, and now I'm just saving these subtools, these visible subtools I have right here, and then uh, the tool will save anything in your tool menu. So any UVs you have, any textures you have loaded, any poly paint that you've done, it's going to save all of your tool relevant stuff. So rarely do I need everything. Um, because even my, like, if project will also save like your render settings and stuff too, but if I need to bring in render settings, I can just bring in a render set. If I need to bring in anything else or like document or materials, I can just load those up. Um, I don't necessarily ever need them with my file. Of course, your mileage may vary if your workflow is different than mine, which probably is. You may do file save as all the time and it saves you a lot of uh, heartache. For me, I almost almost exclusively do tool save as. You can do that from this menu, menu too. You can go file, tool mesh, save as. The other thing too is when you go to load a project, if I go to like file open, it's going to wipe all this out. So if I'm just doing like, hey, I'm working on this skull and I want to I wanna bring in or yeah, a project. I want to bring in this anime head. Uh, it's going to completely wipe out my entire project. Now there's a way around that. You can go load tools from project and you go in here and say Z projects and then you can take a project mesh and be like okay where's my um, anime head and then you can just load a tool from a project so it doesn't completely wipe out your entire session. Um, so that's kind of up to you. Hey everybody. <laughs> um, how do you reverse a resectomy? Uh, you know Snip snap, snip snap. If you want to, so this is the this is the video I was talking about where it has a bunch of the sci-fi um, stuff. And this, oh, oh, that's another thing too. So on Thursday, I'm going to be uh, doing some painter demo stuff. In fact, let me check. Uh, give me just a second. There's something else I want to talk about, but it looks like I won't be talking about it this session. Um, keep an eyeball out on my Twitter. But anyway, we'll be going over on my Thursday, on my Thursday channel, uh, game res and baking and painter stuff and rendering and doing uh, that kind of cool stuff. Cool. Awesome. So anyway, uh, yeah, we got that. And I'm just going to keep scooting through these. Oh, you know what? We had this running in the background, didn't we? Okay. So we have this mesh here. So we can go through here. We can do, um, here's our shaded mesh and our Here's just our mesh geo, and let's see, did this one, yeah, not too shabby. And then um, wireframe, that's decent. Okay, so shaded, and then we got this. So now we need to go and export this thing. Oh, no, wait, we got one more thing to do, which is build our texture. Um, generic, I think it'll be fine, 4096. Yeah, 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 that'll work. This one will be pretty fr uh, pretty quick, I think. I always like to see where it where it's hitching. Yeah, this is more of a single threaded process. Huh. This one doesn't really tax in much. The other cool thing about this one though is that uh, when it hops into like more of a single threaded process, it'll kick in the uh, boost. There it goes. Oops. Now it's now it's hitting its stride. Um, and that's kind of the thing you have to weigh is like, do I want a higher clock speed or more cores? Um, I can get the higher clock speed with more cores uh, when it goes into the boost clock, when I just have one CPU, when it's just activating like one or two, or in this case, like eight uh, cores, it would go into boost just because 
Um, that's not too many on this thing. It's not going to tax it too heavily. Um, but yeah, so we can. Uh, so we got the texture built. So let's go in here to File, Export. Um, we can export the texture. Let's go ahead and export the model. And let's throw this on our desktop here. And run. Yeah, it should work. Export texture, normals. Okay. So this is the thing where it's like if you wanted to walk around a museum and take a picture of a skull, uh, and then you just load in those pictures, and then you can go in here. Uh, let's switch back over to. Oh, load Z tool. Um, you can go in here, and then we could switch to PolyMesh 3D. We're going to go to imports desktop grab it and then we'll go in here let's change it to our skin shader 4 there we go so this little statue and let's also turn on our 4 here that's about right ta-da and then this is where you would go through and do your cleanup and stuff but this is pretty damn pretty damn clean uh, of course, you're going to get in here and you're going to be like, um, you know, I mean, even for polypaint, that's not terrible, but you can load in, go in here to texture import, and we'll go ahead and grab that JPEG here. And then we can go in here and go to texture map. We're going to apply our texture map here. Oh, forgot. ZBrush likes things flipped vertically. There we go. So now... Now we're getting that real resolution. So we turn the texture off. There's our poly paint. That's our vertex color information. And then this is our uh, texture resolution. So again, if you're just walking around a museum and you want to grab like, oh man, that's a really cool Tyrannosaurus Rex skull, uh, just walk around it. Take some pictures, throw it into PhotoScan or Reality Capture, and then um, there's your reference. As opposed to, you know, trying to finagle photographs. If I was trying to sculpt this, I would be like, well, I'm done. How easy was that? Uh, this was all these photos were taken with my old camera, um, so I have a Samsung Galaxy eight or nine. I forget which one. And then um, this was like with my four, six, five Galaxy five or six maybe. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Let's see, how's the Ryzen work? I feel like I already need to upgrade from my 2700X. So this one, the 2990WX, uh, had the NUMA nodes, and it had, um, it had it early on, it had some issues with Windows uh, scheduling, kind of doing some weird stuff. <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, Whiskey's getting... Um, she needs to go outside. I wasn't able to take her out this morning before my live stream. Um, but basically... Yeah, the W the 2990WX had the the Force Numa node, so it didn't have direct memory access, and it, it, the it was good. It was a good if if you had a program uh, like PhotoScan that was like really really taxing, um, the CPU it would, it would work great. However, uh, if you had programs that weren't that didn't really take that didn't really uh, have distributed uh, workloads uh, capabilities built in, uh, it would kind of, it would be not quite so hot. Um, the other cool, the other great thing about this, and this goes back to that, what I'm really noticing all across the board is, uh, let's go to my videos here, is the PCIe 4 on this uh, motherboard here. So, yeah, this is the direct memory access and stuff like that, but basically the motherboard here uh, everything that's plugged in to this thing. Uh, so I have my NVMe drives plugged in uh, that are super duper fast on PCI. Those are PCI 4.0. Um, the RAM is 3600 speed RAM. Um, the CPU can hit, it has 144 uh, lanes, I think. Well, I, I mean, it, that's how many lanes it has total, but I think usable is like 88 or something like that. But uh, a plenty, I should say. And then, uh, what's, what else we got in here? I'm trying to think what else. It's all in here. It's all in the video. Just watch the video. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually noticing all of that combined, like the uh, faster RAM, the faster uh, CPU. This is actually the higher, has a higher clock speed than my 2990WX, and it distributes the workloads better, and um, 
it, it uh, the boost clock is higher. So when I'm just you when it when I just have programs that are only utilizing a little bit. Uh, in fact, we can talk a little bit about this. So if I wanted to do, let's turn on the floor here, and we're going to go into our render settings here. And we're going to say so under render properties, we'll go ahead and do AO and shadows, and then BPR AO. We're going to take this. Uh, I don't like a super blurry AO, so I'm going to turn that blur down. Um, and then we're also going to take that strength up a little bit. And then under the shadow here, we're going to take that strength down a little bit. We're going to take that angle up just to kind of um, make it so that the further away it gets from the object, it blurs out more. And we're also going to crank the ray rays up so we don't get banding. And then we can go through here. And then when I go through and render this, um, even ZBrush, which, oh boy, that did it faster than I thought it was going to. Let me see, perspective. Let me turn that light direction. Oh, we didn't turn on AO. That's why I was like, that was too fast. Uh, basically, oh, we have AO turned on. Damn, that's fast. Uh, let me try that again. Because normally on like a very, obviously if it's already set, it's just going to re-render that. Um, it'll start, it'll, it'll get up to about 75%. Of course, if it's rendering this fast, uh, it doesn't have a chance to, but um, it actually distributes perfectly fine. And then if you wanted to go in here and do your um, filters, I'm not going to do these because it's going to mess up my shadows. Um, it's going to, uh, I mean, these things are almost instantaneous. So it actually distributes pretty well uh, and it has a lot of fast access, but you can see you get pretty decent renders out of ZBrush, man, just do it. Uh, and also in here in your render properties, if you needed access to like, well, I don't want to have to deal with, you know, cutting this thing out or keying off a color from my background, uh, that's all built in. So just remember that under your render, render, what? Render um, passes. So here you have, this is all already cut out. So you can already have a mask in your AO and these are all your depth pass and stuff like this. So you can composite this however you'd like. Uh, Dave Greco stream recently you mentioned you two know each other. Yes, I do know Dave. God, I'm trying to. Guy has been years. It doesn't seem like I've been doing this this long. Like it doesn't seem like, you know, Tiburon to SOE to CA. It does not that many companies, and I've worked on a lot of projects. I mean, I've I can't even remember all the projects I worked on, especially at CA where we work on a lot of stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's been. 10 years, <laughs> I think. Yeah, no, Dave's, Dave's awesome. Uh, he's really, really good uh, concept artist. Okay, so yeah, so we got this. Uh, that's photogrammetry, and that's just straight out of PhotoScan. While we were talking, while we were kind of just messing around, just loading up photographs. So again, take some photographs, get some, and uh, you don't even need to do, like, we, there, there's things we can go in here and you can, like, mask around the things. It has really good masking tools. Um, but I didn't even need to do that. I just kind of did it. I went through here and um, this is the end result. So super duper, uh, super duper neat. Uh, where were we, where did we leave off here? Uh, startup material head. So we were talking about kind of that kind of hard server stuff. Let's load up another copy and see if there's anything else I want to talk about before a whiskey um, attacks me. Oh yeah, so this is so we go into live boolean here. This is where we're kind of, I'm playing around with. It's still super loose. I mean, this is, it looks kind of like, oh, did you go through and uh, do anything special? Not at all. In fact, the end result, let's go ahead and load that up. Might as well get to the end here. And we'll go ahead and I got some low res stuff in here. Skin Z sphere. Delete. There we go. And then this one here, we can go ahead and delete. So. Even this final result uh, for back from here, and you know what? We have our stuff already set up. Let's go and do a render. Um, ooh, okay, good. This one takes longer. Let me do this. There we go. So yeah, it's it's actually doing a really really well, uh, doing really well uh, utilizing all this stuff. There is a thing where you can turn off um, the simultaneous multi-threading SMT, and so basically I have 64 threads. Uh, but really only 32 cores, so I just wanted to use the cores and not do any sort of uh, multi-threading. I could just go in and turn that off, but it seems to be doing all right. I guess I don't need to really worry about it too much. Um, so yeah, here's uh, this final result here in ZBrush, and really, uh, this is still a concept sculpt to me. This this took me, um, I don't know, maybe a day 
to kind of put together and kind of go through and just do the exact same process I'm talking to you about, like going through here and like H polish and trim dynamic and figure out where I want my stuff to go. And really I'm just finagling. Uh, well, that's not entirely true. I did, I did go through and I did split up some of these pieces here. So I do control shift and I mask some pieces out and I go ahead and split um, these pieces off. So it's like, in fact, this piece right, I'm going to go to here. Let's do a quick mirror and weld. And I'm going to go over here to split to similar parts. Where are we at? Turn off line boolean. So now you can see um, if I turn these off here, you can see these are the little individual parts. So these are all the parts that I have split off, but even even these ones, you know, some of these I did rebuild. I went with Z spheres and I kind of rebuild them into like a sub subdivided uh, sub subdiv mesh. Um, but a lot of it really, let's go ahead and turn on dynamic for these. Yeah, and these are dynamic as well. But a lot of this is really still just kind of concept sculpty um, dynamesh. So at this point, this is where I, okay, I spent a day working on this. Do I want to take the time? and rebuild this thing as an entire sub D. Now, depending on the client or depending on what the end result's going to be, um, maybe I would, but in reality, like I could, I could just bake this off as a game res, and that's what I ended up doing is I was like, you know what, it's good enough. Um, and this is this is where I would be like, okay, if I want to evaluate this in engine really quickly, I worked on it a day, I want to get it approved. So I would go through and I just use like Houdini to go through and decimate down to auto UVs, uh, throw it into Substance Painter. Yeah, I guess we can load that up too. Again, I'm going to be heavier in the painter on Thursday. Uh, we can kind of play around with it now, I suppose. Um, but again, just very quickly, get it done in ZBrush, lickety split, and then we'll go to File Open. And then you can even 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 auto UVs. You can use Triplanar. You don't need to worry about uh, doing nice cuts or anything. And this this is actually semi nicely UV'd, so. Take that as with a grain of salt is what I'm saying. This was a little bit more playing around, um, but you can get a you can get an awful lot done. And then when you uh, throw it into Engine, or in this case, if you need to do like beauty renders, you can hop into iRay. Um, surprisingly, if we go into Edit Settings, scroll down here, uh, it uses. I mean, it uses the iRay hardware uses the 2080 Ti and the CPU, and it actually, um, I think this is the one that used CUDA cores here. Yeah, so I mean it. I mean it does. It uses a lot of that processor, and also um, underneath here, yeah, you can see that under the CUDA cores is where this thing really kicks in. Uh, so it, this one's very, very heavy on uh, the CUDA cores and the CPU uh, to get this kind of rendering done. Um, so we can go through here. Let's go to this, and we'll go ahead and turn off. Put that on a clear color there. And another thing we can do, uh, we'll go in here. So we're going to crank this aperture up, and then we can control middle mouse click here. You can kind of like, you can focus in on those eyeballs. You can focus in on here. Um, some of this render time, oh, actually most of the render time here is going to be spent on these teeth because I have subsurface scattering turned on. Um, let me just make sure that carried through here. If we go in here to our, I think it's everything. Yeah, subsurface scattering is turned on. At least in that is. Um, but anyway, yeah, you can go through and very quickly, you know, this is, this is basically, and again, more info on Thursday, but this is basically drag and drop. I went through and went into Substance Share, and uh, Jamie did a T800 mat. So I just grabbed this, downloaded it, dragged it and dropped it onto my skull here. So if you hold down Control Shift and Alt right click, I got the skull mat here, and we just go through here, and I'll just go through and delete all this. And then I can go through here and say T8 hundred for my smart materials. Drag it right here. And there we go. Got a Terminator skull. Uh, if I want to apply that to my eyeballs, all I got to do is right click this and say instantiate across texture sets. And we'll go ahead and just put that on my eyes. Boom. So now any changes I make to the skull mat, like, you know what, I'm going to go to this fill layer here and we're going to take this metal color and drop it down just a bit. Um, my eyes will update as well because it's an instance of that. And then uh, on the teeth here, you want to make sure that you have subsurface scattering, you have scattering turned on, you have a scattering channel, all that stuff. But I'm not going to get too heavy into that. I'm uh, going to get the 64 core 3990X. I don't think so. I think that 
I mean, it, I don't know. Uh, boy, it, it's tempting because, again, if you're building uh, building lighting or you're doing any photogrammetry stuff or any uh, any heavy, heavy rendering, I mean, man, it's only... And video editing, too, and video encoding and stuff is like, oh, that eats up a lot of your uh, resources. Boy, that would be awesome. But at the same time, God, do I need it? No. But do I need it? Yes. Uh, no, I don't have Blender. I don't even think I have Blender on this machine yet. Um, I need to get that loaded up. Uh, do you mentor in any class? I do CGMA. So if you go to CG Master Academy, Pavlovich, I'm not even sure where I am. There we go. I do a CG Master Academy class. We do, um, it's, it's, it's a ZBrush class, but at the very end, we talk about external resources and stuff like that too. Uh, multiple UDIM 4K texture. It's not UDIMs. Um, you can certainly do UDIMs. Uh, I didn't feel the need to go that route necessarily, but it is set up into different texture sets. So basically, um, I mean, you can make every single one of these 4096 if you wanted to. I think the skull is, well, right now it's a 2048. Um, but I can make that 4096. I mean, while I'm working, I can work at whatever resolution I want. I can drop this down to 512 if I wanted to and just kind of work. Uh, but then usually when I'm just working in Substance Painter, I use 2048. And then when I go into export, um, I can go in here and I can export at whatever I want. So the skull, I would put at like 4096. And then the iris, I would probably drop down to like 512. And the eyeballs, 1024. And the teeth, probably 1024. And then I would throw this into, I don't know, wherever you're going. Maybe V-Ray or maybe Unreal Engine, all that good stuff. And then choose what kind of file you want to export. Oh, actually, here's here's what I would do. I would go to File, Export Textures, and throw this into Sketchfab, and then just export that, and that would upload it to Sketchfab, and then you can go and you can click on it. And uh, you guys can check this out if you want. That'll load up the model for you. And then uh, if I go to full screen, oh, I guess you can you can probably see that. Yeah, perfect. So here um, in Sketchfab, you can kind of play around with this. So um, I can go to 3D settings, and you can kind of you can play around with a lot of things in Sketchfab. So this is the kind of stuff you can post at an art station or post at a lot of different places for like a 3D uh, version of your model. And then you won't be able to. Well, let's see. Crap. I need the settings over here, and I can't see that when I'm in full screen. Uh, but basically, I guess I can make that a little bit better to view here. There we go. Something like that. Uh, so you can go through here and you can change your different settings and what kind of uh, background type you want. You want an image in there, do you want a color, you want an environment, and then in your lighting you can change um, what kind of lighting environment you want to use. You want to change that to like uh, pine tree arch or a church. And then if you want to uh, change the brightness in that, and if you want to use the environment lighting at all, and if you turn it off, you're going to see I have actual lighting built into the scene. Let's go ahead and turn that brightness down quite a bit so you can play around more with um, the lighting here. So you can load lighting presets. So I can go in here to like, here's here's a low key lighting preset, or here's an evil genius. I think this is one I used. And then um, here's three point lighting, fairly standard, and then default fairy camp. Oh. So yeah, full moon night's kind of a cool one. And then you can go through here and you can click on any of these lights and you can change the direction that they're coming in. And also one thing you may want to do is turn cast shadows on. Um, that'll kind of set it in there. And then once you get into, you know, metalness, uh, your normal map, if your normal map looks weird, go in here and flip your uh, green channel here. Also make sure you activate subsurface scattering uh, on those teeth. And then you can do like screen space reflection, which is kind of cool to get those eyeballs kind of reflecting nicely. Um, screen space uh, a, I mean, occlusion. Looks like I could do a little bit better job with that one. Is that the feeling you can turn on? You can turn on chromatic aberration. Kind of give yourself a headache a little bit. <laughs> it's kind of neat. Um, and then, of course, like bloom and stuff like that. So let's crank that up. Wow. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, exit out of there. We don't need to save any of that. But anyway, uh, yeah, you just export it straight into here. And there you go. Pretty fun stuff. And again, this is a concept sculpt 
So don't don't be confused where it's like, oh, did you did you spend weeks on that and rebuild it and make it all sub Ds? No, there's no point. If if this is just going into game to be evaluated, this is fine. There's nothing wrong with this, right? Um, at least I don't think there is. Um, but if I did want to go into like IMAX quality and you know go through and rebuild all stuff, I could. But even then, it's like, what's the what am I gaining? Am I going to make this look a little better or um, or is this fine? You know, so let me exit out of this. You know, if it's, I mean, if I'm going to put this in a movie, obviously I'd probably rebuild this. But at the end of the day, I mean, that looks like it's just like little alpha stamps. There's not a whole lot of difference there. So pick and choose your battles. Um, how much you want to sit there and noodle and rebuild or how much you want to sit there and just have a little bit of concepting fun and uh, call it a day. Uh, how many RTX Titans are you going to get? <laughs> probably zero. Um, oh, that's another thing too. The, so we have, this is PCIe 4 on my computer. So my CPU, my um, my RAM, and uh, my hard drives and stuff, I'll use that. But the the RTX, the 2080 Ti RTX, will be PCIe 3. So that's not terrible. It's not like PCIe 3's uh, trash or anything. But um, when the PCIe 4 versions start coming out, you'll probably see an uptick in that too. Yeah, so all I mean it's the Sketchfab part. Uh, this is the this is the uh, Substance Painter part, just kind of going through and texturing. Like I said before, Thursday we'll talk more about that, and then you just export it right into Sketchfab and you play around with the materials and lighting, and then this is what you can kind of send out a little bit, or put in your art station page. Uh, when I change the GPU pressing, get rid of all my ZBrush poly paint textures. Um, ooh, let's talk about that. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. So if I want to render this uh, in Keyshot, I'm going to go over here to Preferences. Nope, Render. Uh, external Renderer Keyshot. And then hit BPR. Uh, to go back to hard server stuff, like this is all Z modeler. Just kind of going through and using. You can do, my YouTube channel has a ton of Z modeler stuff. And then um, this stuff in here was all Z modeler. The little stuff on the side of his skull here. Uh, let's wait for this to send it on over. Um, all this stuff was all Z modeler. Um, I rebuilt some of the stuff with Z spheres, and then use Z modeler to kind of clean that up and make a subdivision surface. So yeah, all this stuff in here was all Z modeler. Basically, anything that's kind of <clears throat> easy <laughs> easier uh, as all z modelers like this all this stuff here is just straight up z modeler because why not that's fine that's easy stuff and then here's key shot um by default key shot is probably let's drop this down to like 97 uh, percent just so i can have a little bit more resources load over for streaming Oh man, did I? Uh, hold on. Preferences. Do, 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 do. Maya, yeah. Okay. There we go. I don't know why it wasn't working. Okay, so uh, we're in Keyshot, and so here's where you can turn it um, from CPU to GPU. Um, obviously, GPU works just fine, and our CPU works just fine, and we can pop it over to GPU here and let's see if it gets rid oh I didn't throw over a polypane did I so here's where the GPU kicks in and we'll go down here and that's the thing about uh, any GPU renderer it's going to have to initialize it's going to have to uh, like build kernels I think is what it's called and then once it's done doing that, uh, then it then it renders quick. But you're always going to have that initial startup time. Uh, same thing in Marvelous Designer. It'll kind of stop, think for a long time, and then... Oof. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what that is. Let's take a look. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Environment. Uh, it's actually been a while since I've been in Keyshot. Okay, okay. Hell, um, okay, let's look at our material. So I've got this. Uh, okay, let's do this. Let's do my scene. Here's all my ZBrush stuff. I'm gonna go into my materials here. I'm just gonna drag one material 
on my whole ZBrush file, so just to simplify this. I'm going to go in here, and we're going to do the material graph, and let's see what's going on here. Um, legacy, upgrade to new nodes. We have matte cap and, okay, that's probably what it was. For some reason, this matte, this legacy node over here, click on that, and then go and um, update this node, and now it looks like it works better. So now let's go in here to our scene and um, show all parts. That might be it, uh, up, updating that node. So again, just in case you missed that, um, you can go in here to the material graph and it's this matte cap node right here. If you um, click on that one, uh, it'll tell you to upgrade that. Oh crap, oh crap. How do I get out of this mode? Um, again, it's geometry now. No. All of them. There we go. <laughs> click this one. Um, so this mat cap right here uh, needs to be updated. So when you have that one clicked, you can update that node, and then uh, it should work a little bit better. Although, shift, is that not how you environment? How do I? Let me know how to do it. Anyway, 31, okay, yeah, and then while you're using GPU, it's gonna, uh, again, it's like, it's, it, I think by default, you're not even gonna see that, it's gonna be like, um, copy, I think, and you're not gonna be like, hey, has, what part of my GPU is it using? It's only using 18%. Uh, go over here to your CUDA uh, nodes, and you're gonna see, it's, it'll, that's that's where it's really taxing it. So, okay, this that, that should be um, the thing. So now if we go over here, let's do glass material. Let's see how fast it renders that with, this will be the really super glass solid. Now we're going to go here to lighting, jewelry setting, and then we'll go into our glass here and we'll say, uh, we'll say that's a one. And maybe, not too shabby. I just try to try to tax it with some caustics there. <laughs> so yeah, and, and there's always going to be caveats between like CPU and GPU rendering. Uh, the GPU stuff is going to be a little bit more memory bound. It's going to be kind of dependent on what kind of memory you have on your GPU and. Um, there's uh, occasionally like in V-Ray and stuff, you'll see stuff like, oh, these particles may not render correctly on a GPU or something like that. So was, there's always going to be kind of, eventually it's probably going to be all worked out. Um, just wait for this to kind of finish here. Um, but at the end of the day, um, you know, kind of pick and choose your battles and, uh, but yeah. So it looks like just that, that node needs to be updated by default. Uh, gives you tiled maps in GPU rendering. Okay. Um, are those spokes near the cheeks done with Z spheres? And how did you flatten one of them and change the shape from non-organic to just pure cylinders? You do them all with Z modeler. Um, well, let's take a look at that. Let's go ahead and um, I can pause that. All right, we can just close out of that. I think we I think we solved that problem. Um, so now these things right here. If we go back to this head. Essentially. We did that trick where we kind of pulled those in. And then on top of that, just going in here to my brushes, hard surface alphas, I grabbed these off. Um, these were alphas that I got off Gumroad, but then I converted them to, um, to multi-select. So now I can just, instead of having one alpha loaded for a brush and having to go into my comma key and load in a bunch of alphas and switch between them, I can just very quickly go through, or I can just hit M. Oops and click a different alpha. So if I wanted to go through here and let's load up, I think I can find the exact one for that one as another base, this one. So I can hit M and it was probably something like this one and we can drop that Z intensity down and then we can go through here and we can just hold down Alt and we can just kind of plop these bad boys in there. Now you can also um, use masking for this if you find this is a little bit um, trying your patience as far as like getting these things 
um, completely lined up. So in this case, I might do something like smart transpose masks. So we're going here to, um, let's hit Y, W, Y, and we'll switch over to um, brush smart. We'll look for here. Oh, transpose, brush transpose smart mask. And then underneath um, the alpha for this, we can just grab that brush alpha. Now if I hold down control and drag, I can go through and I can just position this alpha. Let's turn off uh, X symmetry. So now I can just go through and be like, okay, I want my alpha to go right here. Invert that, and now I can just use inflate or deflate or use uh, transpose to kind of push those in. So it might be a little bit easier for you. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of that. Um, and of course you can make your own alpha, it's not that difficult. So you can go in here and you can say, you know what, give me um, give me a cylinder. Go into edit mode, switch over here to start material. And we're gonna go down here to initialize and we're gonna say, um, let's say 16 W, make poly mesh 3D, Y. Oops, we're gonna go in here to extend. Mm -hmm -hmm. It's been a while since I've been in here, extender. It's been a while since I've done a lot of things. I should just stop saying that. And oh, let's go in here to geometry. I forgot this had more subdivisions on this side. We can go in here to uh, delete loops. Oh, it doesn't want to work. Well, you know what, heck with that. I can just take these ones here, delete hidden, and then say cube mesh polygroup all, pull back, flip. So now I can go through here. I want to make an alpha out of this. We're going to go do a quick uh, bevel, edge loop complete. And I can round this out. I can go through here. And I can do creasing, or I can just go through here and do like an insert, multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. We kind of pull this up and round it out a little bit. And then we'll go through here. Let's do a quick group by normals. Or we can just grab these, and then we can say crease. And then we can hit D for dynamic. And there we go. So we're going to go ahead and like smooth divide this up a little bit here. And then we can go in here to alpha, create, or go into brush, no alpha, uh, alpha from mesh. And then we can go through here and we can just kind of, okay, that's a good enough alpha, hit okay. And now I have an alpha sitting out here. So now we can go into like standard brush. We'll go ahead and clone this off and then we'll grab that alpha. And then we can just use like drag dot and then go back to our working head here. And then you can just um, kind of go through, oh, focal shift down, it's the intensity, wherever it needs to be. You can go through and just drag these on here, or you can go into drag rect, kind of push these on here, and then maybe do a little smooth, or uh, like we were doing before, just brush transpose smart mask, hold that control, and then, um, oops, you gotta load in that alpha, and then you can just kind of put these wherever you want, and then this one you can actually squish it too if you want to kind of go through and kind of squish, and then. Um, if you want to, you can blur it out a little bit and then control alt, bring it back. And then um, you can just use transpose or you can switch back here and you can push these in. Uh, or you can just use your deflate inflate kind of thing and pop these out. This one might be a little bit easier to kind of go through here. And then this one, you can go through and kind of mess around with. Uh, maybe not the best example, but you get the point. And then, yeah, so this back here, this was a mix. I did, um, I had Dynamesh, I did this little Z modeler cylinder on here, and then I just Dynameshed it all together, dropped an alpha on here. Um, and all this stuff, like these things here, uh, I, I recorded everything, even all the way through my game res. So if I go over here to Apinator Source, there we go. Um, I have it all everything I've done, me talking all the way through it. Now, me being able to sit down and edit all this stuff, who knows, who knows? I have a full-time job. I just do this for fun on the side, so I don't know. Maybe I'll try and get around to it, but um, it might take me a while. I still gotta do my ZBrush 2020 videos. Um, the spokes near the teeth. Oh, these things, yeah, these are just pure Z modeler. So if I do Shift D, yeah, these are, these are nothing. So if I go through here and I just do like, grab a cylinder here. And then we can say, you know, we go ahead and split this off. You can say, okay, I wanna, oops, turn on LSIM and shrink this down here. And then, oh, I want this little piece to come out. So I can grab these ones here and I could say, 
let's do a quick mask um, polygroup all and then W you can hold down control and pull this out and we can say grab these ones here and we could say Q mesh polygroup all pull this out and then maybe we, or you know what might be easier ah, you know I would probably pull this out and then maybe I would do like an inset polygroup island region and pull this in and then um, Q mesh polygroup all hold down shift and just kind of pull let me do a quick, hold on. Mirror, mirror and weld. There we go. Uh, you can kind of pull along this uh, angle here, and then if you want to, again, just keep doing maybe another inset here. Inset polygroup island region. And then maybe pull in another inset, and then Q mesh that back here. And then um, if you wanted to, if you wanted this to be a little bit rounder, again, you just go and bevel and bevel that out. And then you could round that off, or you can just leave it and do it in your creasing. Um, or you can go in here and you can do like insert single edge loop and then maybe bevel edge loop complete here. And then in here, um, I always, you could just Q mesh this straight back Oop, like, like that. Um, I prefer usually to go in here and do another inset just to kind of give me, oops, looks like I'm working a little bit too small uh, whenever it starts. Um, behaving like that, I can kind of, I'm, I'm working at a very, very small um, resolution here. Let's see if that'll help. Inset polygraph island. Yeah, it's having a little bit of a, it's having a little bit of an issue. Um, here, but what I could do, I could also just do this inset polygroup island region and then grab this one here, or I could just manually go do it. Insert single edge loop here, here, polygroup here, and then Q mesh uh, polygroup all here. And then shift and just pull that back. And now I'm just going to run a crease tolerance on here and then just manually go through. I mean, I can hit D for dynamic and be like, oh, I do need to crease uh, this edge here and here and then I need to decide, like probably by default it's going to look like this um, so this is where you can go through and you'd be like you know what I want to do like a crease level of three smooth level of four maybe I want to uncrease these edges here and then um, insert oh that's buried in there <laughs> I insert one of these things here. There we go. There you go. And then, yeah, so that's just like this type of stuff here. And then these are just cylinders and spheres. There's nothing, nothing fancy going on in there at all. Same thing for this. This is just a bunch of um, cylinders I made and then I bridged between them and then I just extruded them. This is just an insert mesh brush. So nothing fancy. <laughs> Uh, is Houdini that good in preparing non-deformable mesh for game ready, or is Houdini better comparable, for example, decimating complex shapes and manually fixing? Um, it's probably it's similar to Decimation Master as far as like deformable meshes um, for non-deformable meshes. Deformable meshes, zero mesh is better, um, but there's, I mean, you can try it. Um, you can do you can download Houdini Indie and just give it a shot and see. And the other cool thing about Houdini is you can you can just use the defaults and be like, okay, let me just game res this using whatever nodes they have. But you can also go through and be like, okay, I want to find my edges on my hard surface or my high res geometry, and I want to. If you're using Z modeler stuff, it has a very very nice little game res down based on your uh, edge loops. Um, but also, if you want more information on that, it's on my YouTube channel. There's a whole playlist on somewhere in here where it is Houdini game dev tool set go through there I mean it's not everything obviously uh, Houdini is a very very complex program but it's kind of some basics uh, you prefer Z-Modeler or regular model? I've been meaning to try Z-Modeler since people are telling me it feels much better once you get over the awkward controls the only thing you need to go to get over in Z-Modeler um, in fact I hate box modeling and other programs simply because they don't have a concept of polygroups. Like you can have selection sets, but those are trash. You know, it's like if I want to go through here and I want to make polygroups of stuff or I want to do group by normals and use these polygroups for modeling 
purposes. Uh, that's super easy. Uh, and the only thing difficult about Zmodeler is learning, um, let me see if we do a group by normals. Very well. The only thing difficult is learning where these things are. So when I go to inset polygroup island region, I can do that very quickly. If you're trying to do this, you're probably like, okay, wait, inset, oh, uh, where's inset? There it is. Okay, where's polygroup island? Uh, oh, there it is, region. Uh, oh, or you'd probably do each poly first. You'd probably be like, oh, oh, dang it, region. Okay, and you're gonna be super slow and super stupid. However, after using it for an hour, um, you kind of just get used to, you know, a QMash, Polygroup Ball, where things are, and that's the harder part. And you can hold down Shift and go in here and like go in. I know where Bevel is right here, and I know where Edge Loop Partial is, and I know uh, what's available to me, um, and that's the hard part. Now, is doing this going in here any harder than remembering a bunch of hotkeys for like Bevel, Extrude, or doing a mark? You can do a marking menu too if you wanted to get real fancy. Um, like in Maya, you do like shift right click and you can go through and have all your operations available to your blender, um, have marking menus or a bunch, like blenders, just a ton of hotkeys. Um, for me, I like hotkeys, but man, within reason. <laughs> uh, any reason why you didn't use live boolean instead of Zmodeler? I wonder if it's just convenient for low poly process if you start with Zmodeler. Uh, yeah, if it's just simple stuff like this, there's no point in using live boolean. And uh, if I was to use boolean on this, I'd have to do a lot of cleanup for my game res. As a, or same thing with this. Like when I'm just doing this, um, yeah, just model it if it's simple. Now, if you're doing very complex shapes, then yeah, live boolean might be a little bit easier. Um, but you're gonna have you're gonna pay the price of having to go through and make a game res unless you're just gonna decimate it down or auto game res. It. In this case, it doesn't matter. Uh, Morph UV target is not working once I dynamesh my subtool. Yeah, Morph UVs rely on having the same geometry. If you change the vertex order there's nothing to morph to. A morph requires two vertex positions, and if you have a vertex position where you save a morph target, and then you completely change all your verts, it's not going to morph to anything. So you can't dynamesh with uh, UVs at all. In fact, yeah, if you dynamesh your subtool, you're going to lose your UVs, number one. And number two, even if you're just morphing, um, you can use history project when you dynamesh, but that's just a projection. That's not a morph. Well, the other cool thing too is just if you're using ZBrush a lot, like, am I going to hit really hit Go Z if I want to go through here and be like, okay, let me put a cylinder on here, and uh, it, it, yes, I would say start simple. It's like let's say split mass points. Yeah, just start simple. It's like okay, I need to make a cylinder. Well, I need to make a cylinder. Well, I need to put a bevel on the cylinder. Well, I might as well just do it in here. There's no point in me Go Zing and doing a bevel. Uh, and then eventually you get to the point where it's like, you know what? There's no point in me going into another program to model any of this. Uh, now there's my I could make an argument for like if you need to cut across very complex geometry with like n-gons and that type of modeling sure um, or even then like going into like a CAD modeler and doing some crazy stuff um, absolutely there, there's there's give and take I'm not saying Zmodeler is the be all end all and that's all you need to learn uh, but it's definitely worthwhile if you just need to do you know simple stuff and always remember too if we do um, let's do auto groups here do a quick mirror and weld. Uh, we can go through here and then um, also you have stuff like this where you can go into uh, boolean meshes here. I always like to steal like something out of here. It's a W and just grab. I'm going to steal this thing here. Control shift X. Oops. Shrink, shrink. Delete hidden. Brush. Create insert mesh new. Not sure which one I was working on here. There we go. Um, you do have mesh fusion capabilities on here too, so you go through here. You can push that in, control drag, control drag again. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off SMT. There you go. So you can go ahead and fuse these together, even though I probably could have made a better choice on using a higher red cylinder, um, or if I wanted to kind of push this in. So instead of doing like a Boolean mesh and having to clean that up, I can just have this, and this would be much easier to clean up than, um, you know, the alternative. In fact, before I do that, let's do this. Let's hit um, D for dynamic. I'm going to go ahead and run a crease tolerance. Let's drop that crease tolerance down a little bit here. I'm going to put in, say, crease level of, I was going to max that out. And we'll say smooth subdiv of one. Apply. 
delete lower. And now if I go through here, that should work a little bit better. That's yeah, a little better. So now um, you go through here. Now you can do like a crease PG, turn on dynamic. And then uh, we can say crease level of two, smooth set of three. And now you can work with just polygons as opposed to um, other stuff. Cool. All righty, everybody. It's 8.10. Need to take these girls out. Thanks, everybody. And uh, again, on my channel, PavMike, twitch.tv, PavMike, or my YouTube channel, I'll be streaming more of the painter side of things on Thursday. So I'll get out of your hair. You guys have a good day, and I'll see you Thursday on my channel.